In this step, we're going to create a fire obstacle that will deal damage every second that we are in the fire, which is good. So let's do that. So here's what we need to do. First of all, we need to go back to our third person character blueprint and we need to give the character some health to be taken away. And that's going to be another variable. So we're just going to go very basic and have health that is just 100. And when you go down to zero, the player will die. So we're going to add a new variable. I'm going to call it health. And this time, Boolean's the wrong kind for this. It needs to be numerical. So up here, we can go variable type. And there's a couple that would work for this. Uh, but I'm going to choose integer for this which is essentially a whole number. So integer is what I'm going to choose. Now I'd like to set the default value of this to be 100, but at the moment I can't because I've not compiled the blueprint. So we'll do that, compile, and then I'm going to set the default to be 100, and then I'll have to compile it again. Perfect. So now I'll have some health that I can take down, but I want to also know whether or not the player is standing in the fire and we need another variable to control that. So we can do the checks as to whether or not we should still be taking a damage off. So I'm gonna create another variable. I'm gonna call it in fire, question mark. And this guy needs to be a Boolean because it's either gonna be true or false. And we'll compile it. And by default, I want this to be false because at the beginning of the game, the player shouldn't be in the fire. So that should be all the variables we need to get us started. Okay, now we're going to create the blueprint that is going to start taking this damage off. And it's going to be a custom event. So I'm going to right click and start typing custom. And you can add a custom event. Now this is an event that we can have called by other events, which is very useful. I'm going to call this custom event fire damage. Perfect. And this is only going to happen if they're in the fire. And we also don't want this to happen instantly. We want it to happen once they've been in the fire for a second. So what we're going to do is we are going to add a delay before we do anything. So if we just add a delay node and we're going to have the delay be one second like that. And once a second has passed, we'll see if they're actually in the fire. So it might be that they run through the fire. This event's triggered but it won't start taking any health until they're still in the fire after a second. So let's, after we've waited a second, add a branch. And the condition on this branch is gonna be, are they in the fire? So let's get in fire. So I'm just dragging it from here, look, let go. And we're gonna get it and plug it into there. So we want to know, is that true? And if it is true, we want to take 10 off the health. So what we're going to do is get the health, or well, I'm going to drag the health in rather. I'm going to set it. And I like to set it to minus 10. So we need to find out what it is, take 10 away, and then set that as the new value. So in order to do that, we need to get the health. So that's going to get the current health, which by default will be 100. And then what I'm going to do is drag out of here, and I want to subtract from it subtract like that and what i'm going to do is take away 10. so i'm taking the health minus 10 and then we're going to plug that into the result so now when we go into the fire that's going to take 10 health off now how are we going to know that well we also are going to need to put that on screen somehow so the final thing that we're going to do before we test it is we are going to do a print string like that and we are going to take what is coming out of the health and just plug it in here. Now, what's going to happen here, you can see it's going to convert an integer to a string, which happens here. So string has to be text. So what Unreal Engine will do is it will put it through this node, which will just convert it to text so it will show on screen. That's everything we need for this particular event right now. But the problem is we've got no way of triggering this event. So that's what we need to do now. So let's just... Compile and save that. We're now going to go back into our Blueprints folder. So let's go in here. I'm going to create a new Blueprint class. It's going to be an actor, and I'm just going to call this one BP underscore fire damage. Perfect. Now, I don't really need this to do a lot. So let's open it up. 
I'm going to add in a box collision. Nice. And then I want a way for this, for now at least, to be able to be seen in my game. So in the details for this, I'm just going to start typing hidden. And you can see it's hidden in game. And I don't want it to be hidden yet. We'll hide it later, but for now, I want to be able to see where this box is. So we're going to turn that off. Compile and save. And I'm just going to drop this into my level. I'm just going to drop it here. I'm going to bring it up above the ground. And I want it to be a little bit taller. Not that tall, a little bit shorter than that. I'm just going to rotate it around slightly. Try and get an angle that I like. And then we're going to make it a little bit longer like that. That's still too tall. Like that. Okay. And then what I want to do is just go press play. And now I'll be able to see where that box is. So I can tell when my player is overlapping it, which is good. So then what we need to do is use that to start adding damage to the player. So what we'll do now is go back into our fire damage and into the event graph for that. We're going to get rid of all of these guys and it's going to be a on component begin overlap. Perfect. We need to check if it's the player as we've done in previous steps. So we're going to cast the third person character. And then we want to do a couple of things as the third person character. So what we will do first is we are going to set in fire to true. Because they will in fact be in the fire. So let's tick that box. You can see I'm connecting everything up. So my logic continues. And we'll also want to trigger. So also add the third person character. So I'm dragging out of here again. We're going to do the fire damage. Like that. And we will call that. So we're going to say true, and then it's going to set that to start happening. Now, you can see that I've, this is a little bit messy here. And I can make that a bit neater by just double clicking on this blue wire, like that. And this adds what's called a reroute node. And I can just use these to stop things overlapping too much and make it a bit easier to follow the logic. And there we go. So that's all that we need to have happen now when we overlap the fire. So let's compile and save that. And let's see if this does anything. So I'm now going to run over my firebox. And you can see that 90 was displayed in the top left hand corner of the screen. If I leave that and go back in, it waits a second and then 80. And also if I run straight through it, it still takes the health. And that's because we haven't added an end overlap yet that will stop that damage happening. So let's put that in quickly. So we're going to go back to fire damage. And then we're going to get for our box component. So on component end overlap. Check that it's the third person character that has stopped overlapping. And if that is the case, we're going to set in fire to false. Excellent. So let's compile, save, and let's test again. So when we run into this fire, it will wait a second and take 90 or take 10 off. And then if I run through it, it doesn't take any health because I wasn't in there for long enough. If I go back in, this should now bring me down to 80. Perfect. So now we're getting there. It is taking damage, but it's not taking damage every second that we're in there. And we need to figure out a way of doing that, don't we? Because that's kind of the point of the fire damage. So we're going to go back into our third person character. And it's this event here, the fire damage one, that we need to add some more logic to, to make this keep happening. And it's actually quite simple. All we need to do is go around again and repeat this in a loop. And it will repeat while ever the player is in the fire because we've got a check. So here's what we'll do. We're going to drag out of our print string at the end we're going to go back into the delay at the beginning and what i'll then do is i'm just going to move this a minute so i can put some reroute nodes in so i can see what i'm doing so i'm just going to put this one here and we'll add another one there so you can see that's now going to go around and around and it should stop. So the way off of this loop is when this becomes false, when we're no longer in the fire. So let's test that out. Play.
So we're now going to run into the fire and our health goes down 90, 80, 70, 60. So we're losing health. Let's now leave that. And you can see that we're no longer losing health anymore. That's good. So now let's go in and there's a couple more problems we need to solve before we're done with this step. So you can see we keep going down and the health will now go down below 100, which is not what we want. We kind of want it to stop at zero. And there is a node that we can add in that will quite easily do that for us. So back into third person character and it's here. So when we're setting the health, we're taking 10 off, which is what we wanted to do, but we don't want it to take 10 off when we go below zero. And we can use a node here called a clamp. So we're gonna take this result here and I'm just gonna type clamp. And you see in brackets it's integer because we're dealing with an integer. And what we can do is set the min and max that these numbers can ever be. So I'm gonna set the minimum to zero and the max to 100 because that's all I ever want these to be at this stage. And then the return value of that is gonna go into our health there. So let me just neaten that up a little bit so I can see what I'm working with. There we go. So let's see what happens now. Compile, save, and play. So we're gonna go and stand in our fire. And you can see that the health is going down. And now we're gonna clamp those values so it can only ever be between zero and 100. You see now it's still trying to take 10 off, but it can't because we clamped those values. So we now have a way of getting our player's health all the way down to zero. And that's basically it for all the logic that we need to happen in this step. So we've now got it so that we have an obstacle that the player can overlap. It will take health off them and then they will eventually die. In the next step, we're going to make this all feel a bit more dramatic. So we're going to make it so that the player actually will die in the next step. So we're going to add some ragdoll physics and make him all fall to the ground and we're also going to add in some fire so that it just looks cooler so join me in the next step where we will finish off this wonderful fire obstacle and we will have learned an awful lot about making games thanks for watching and supporting the channel if you'd like to help me create more content like this please consider becoming a patron on patreon the contributions I get through Patreon make a huge difference in keeping this channel going. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to make sure you don't miss my upcoming tutorials. Your support and engagement mean the world to me and help my channel continue to grow. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.